Oh, <laughs> full view. Right. And we are live. God fucking damn it, Zix. All right, so <laughs> we're live. But he- welcome everybody to episode three of um, the Smokescreen podcast. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, last time we had fake uniform on, and we were talking about things we want to see in the game. And um, the very first one we had Zix. So funny, th- funny enough for episode three, we actually have fake uniform over here uh, to my right. Say hello, fake. There we go. Perfect. Thank you so much, Fake, <laughs> for saying hello. <laughs> hello, Fake. I don't. I don't think he's here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then uh, sitting across the table here, we have um, Zix. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. You, you look. <laughs> you look so extra right now. It's kind of ridiculous to be completely no, honest. Don't stare up my skirt, dog. <laughs> FBI, open up. All right. So. Uh, the thing that we're going to be talking about today is going to be the changes of the uh, of all the classes and the class changes that are happening within the servers. Um, we're going to be kind of like double dabbing in what we saw in the global test servers, but the biggest thing, the most what we're going to talk about is actually confirmed to be coming through on the um, SEA server update, so we know that NA is going to get it as well. Um, I, we're gonna, we'll take it character by character and just kind of talk about it. Because there's some really interesting changes. Um, there's actually a lot of really interesting changes. And a lot of changes to classes that... I mean... I say really dramatically affect the classes. To be completely honest. Um, um, <laughs> except for Striker. <laughs> Striker's not getting Ooh, touched good. at all. But... Um, so Kuno... We'll talk about Kuno. Because it's like not a lot of fucking changes at all. But... It's, it hurts the class a lot. <laughs> like, a lot, a lot. I really feel bad for Kunos, and you should all, like, have a short memorial service uh, with your Kuno friends. And, you know, pat them on the back. Let them know that you like them, you know, and you're there for them. Because not these are all the changes that are happening to Kuno. And some of these um, are going to... Some... <laughs> and some of these are going to happen again um, with a Ninja. But we'll just talk about Kuno at the moment. So the biggest one that's going to affect Kunos is the stiffness effect um, by uh, is going to get removed from tending cutter. It's going to be applied to monsters only, like Oak. like. <laughs> so basically, their large scales dying in that aspect because tending cutter. If you guys don't know what it is, it's like the big massive AOE. Um, that shoots off a lot of slashes and they they use it for mobility protection and also as like a large trap or even engage um, to stiffen their enemies and a lot of them at that and that's going away and that's going to be hurting Kunos quite a bit in large scale and it's gonna I think it's going to hurt their duels a lot also because it's most players in video are like hella easy to catch in traps I think that's why no pun intended there but like um like that's why tamers do so well in PvP, uh, as and also what DK has a trap. Does Striker have like a trap at all? No, no. I mean we have bananas. Okay. <laughs> we used to have a trap. It was Echo Spirit. Okay, okay. So a decent amount of classes have traps, and I feel like they're going away for the most part. Um, so we're we're gonna kind of see what happens with those in the future. I almost feel like they're trying to remove those, but we'll see. Um, another change with Kuno is basically concealment is going to be cancelled if attacked by an enemy, meaning any damage at all. So concealment, the way it used to work, was basically you'd be going um, if you were invisible, like you could still get like slapped around or something. But what brought you out of it was a CC. Now it's going to be any damage to you whatsoever. Now apparently, from what I've heard, um, like bleeds, poisons, burns, like damage over time. It does not bring you out of concealment in the global test labs. So I think you're still safe with damage over time, but any other damage is going to get rem- uh, is going to make you get uh, knocked out of concealment. And I can like understand this change because ninjas and kunos who would like consistently stealth, especially with the, the rebombs now, that give you pretty much like almost in, like a uh, permanent concealment, even though there's a stamina gate on it now. It kind of it would suck to fight those because it was just like really obnoxious and stupid and like one v ones and stuff. But in terms of large scale, 
it was extremely beneficial. Like very, very beneficial in large scale for classes that already aren't very, very good um, in large scale. So I'm kind of interested that they would take that away because it's kind of what makes a class special. You know what I mean? It'd be kind of like, I don't know. It's like taking like the, the, the uniqueness um, out of the class and why people would play that class in terms of large scale. But again, um, I think they did it to kind of help out 1v1s or maybe small scale fighting in that aspect. I don't know. We'll see. Um, or if they just want them to be bad at large scale, I guess. Um, so the super armor effect, the next change is the super armor effect, um, by suicide fall has been removed as well. Suicide fall is the pre awakened grab. Um, it was the only grab that Kuno has, uh, and it's completely, there's no super armor. It used to be an iframe. The grab's been nerfed a lot. The grab used to be an iframe and, um, it was about maybe like 0.3 seconds or like half a second long. Um, as an iframe, and then it got turned into a super armor, same duration, and then now there's it's a completely unprotected ability. And I'm okay with this personally. I kind of think that all grabs in the entire game should be unprotected because I feel that's a little bit of like a that would help balance the classes that do and don't have grabs more. And I think like having a protected grab is like, especially in this meta, since you know they're taking away protection from a lot of grabs, it's a little bit OP to have a protected grab. Um, I think it's just a little bit too strong, and I'm kind of fine with it. I just kind of wish they'd make it like that across the board. And I think every class that doesn't have a grab would like agree with that too, that all grabs should be unprotected. Um, Striker has two grabs, right? It's uh, what, pre-awaken and awaken? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they both protected or, or like, are they both unprotected? Um, just awaken, or pre-awaken is uh, protected. Okay. Is the pre-awaken the one where you grab them by the throat and then you like bash them in the face like three times and then throw them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's protected. Okay. So I find that like a little bit OP. Um, I, I had a feeling it was protected. I just wanted to like completely make sure because like not only is this a super long CC, um, which like if you use that at the very end of your combo or something, it kind of like it can kind of act as like a mystics vacuum and like extend a cc chain kind of like a down smash or something so i think they should shorten the duration on that i don't mean to like jump off on a tangent here about striker because we're talking about kuno but um also the, what, but what i'm talking but what, about no, no. please drop your leg <laughs> I, I just say like if and when the striker is grabbing you and punching you in the face they have super armor is it's a super armor iframe it's a super armor right super armor okay but but you can't get but, but you only... can't get, Go my ahead. only thing is, like, I completely agree with you. I like my only thing to like argue against it, though, is like there are specific roles in large scale PvP. So, like, a, a striker and a, and a mystic sometimes is a good wingman for setups for other classes to get the kills. But other than that, like, I, I am with you. Like, I don't think grabs should have super armors, but I think they're, they sometimes should in certain case scenarios. But I, I, I'm four and four, not four at the same time, I guess. Okay. I just feel like the striker specifically, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to pick a bone, but like their grab is really long. It's like a long it's grab. Like a, long. I completely agree. Like yeah. It's a super yeah. long CC. We can shorten it, but you know, we don't because there are times like where we get slowed and, you know, getting a pre awakened uh, grab, especially when getting slowed, it's a, a good way to kill off a good chunk of a, a of a debuff. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and you're protected that entire time, also. So, so you can almost so use it against the one person. Safe. Against one person, though. Well, not against one person. I mean, like if you if you're like fighting small scale or something like that, then uh, you're protected while you're grabbing that person. You can heal up. You know, you're not going to get CC'd. Um, you can pop into like people are probably going. You can almost use it as like a trap. Like you grab one person, you know, all the you're stationary, so people are going to go up on you. And then you're going to be able to like instantly cast like another CC ability, like your you know shift Q or whatever, and um, and CC the people who went in to attack you, even though you had super armor with that person, and you just CC three people because um, you threw one on the ground, and then either wait, wait you're, when you throw somebody on the ground, even that CCs, so it's a good way to bait people also because you're stationary, and then you'll CC two people or more when you end the end your grab. So. Either way, it's a prolonged way of me saying that I think all grabs should be unprotected, so I don't really feel too bad about losing super armor on Suicide Fall. Um, and then the next change is going to be uh, the stiffness effect from Black Moonlight. 
is going to be applied to monsters only. So we're losing our stiffness um, from Black Moonlight. I'm a little bit sad about this because, again, like that was a, a relatively large um, impact area to apply a CC in large scale. Um, I didn't use it too, too much. I, I Apparently they didn't. I guess they're not taking the super armor off of Black Moonlight, which I thought they were, but... Um, the stiffness is going to go away, which means, again, another nerf to large-scale CC. So they're really, really taken away, like, pardon me, they're really, really taken away large-scale CC for Ninjas and Kunos. Um, which is a little bit strange to me, because nobody was complaining about these and that I know of, and I play the game a little bit too much, and, and I'm pretty involved in the community, I don't really know anybody who is fucking complaining about, you know, like, uh, large-scale CCs for ninjas or kunos. So the fact that they were, the, the things that they were complaining about the most was, like, block jump, the damage from surface ascension, and, um, maybe, maybe, like, too much lifesteal from kuno? Like, I don't even know if people were really complaining about kuno too much in general, but, um... So kind of interesting why they're taking, I mean, they, they they really hurt Kuno. I don't want to say something dumb and like extreme, like they killed the class because you're always going to have people like, you know, a real Kunos will stay Kuno or like, oh, they didn't kill the class. People were just freaking out or, or Kunos that use Tendon Cutter as an engage were dumb anyway, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anybody can play a fucking class how they want. It just, all right. Just because somebody plays different differently than you doesn't mean they're fucking garbage or if somebody used tendon cutter a lot or whatever, or if they're complaining about a change or too much of a nerf, like it's kind of like the, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like people want to seem like strong, you know, where they're like, Oh, that did, that doesn't bother me. Like you step on a nail. You're like, well, that didn't, that didn't fucking hurt at all. It's like, okay, dude, fucking relax. We all know it hurt a little bit. Jesus Christ. So I think that they did hurt the class a lot. And, um, anybody who says otherwise, I don't really believe, to be completely honest, and I, it's kind of interesting, their point of view, but, uh, because it's literally a direct nerf, and it's pretty, it's a pretty large nerf, especially because Kuna doesn't have as much damage as Ninja, so their large-scale CC was really what they banked on in terms of, um, large-scale and stuff like that. Uh, so moving over from Kuno to Ninja is kind of the same changes for the most part. I'll gloss over the ones that we already covered. Which was Black Moonlight, no longer stiffness. Um, we don't have super armor on our uh, pre awakened grab, which is fine, even though I'd like to use those protections sometimes. Uh, same thing with concealment being canceled. Um, and then fix the issue where super armor effect was applied to Beheading the Dead. So a lot of ninjas didn't even know this existed, but we kind of had like a very, very small lingering super armor on Beheading the Dead, which is like hella nice um, and helped us with large scale. But now they took that away. So now it's even more dicey to use beheading in uh, in large scale now. And we're more apt to get knocked out of it. And in small scale. But you know, I want to focus a little bit more on large scale with these changes. Although um, they did add like a debuff on it. Which is reduction to all DP. Um, has been added to beheading the dead. So that's kind of interesting. And I'm also curious what the reduction is. I really wish they'd just fucking tell us the number. Because we're literally going to find out tomorrow. So maybe I picked a bad time to do the podcast, but what I'm curious about and what I hope they did, um, even though this may be seen as broken, but I hope that it's a different um, DP debuff than ankle cutter because ankle cutter is 15. So I'm kind of hoping because if something is like a different value, like 10 and 15 or whatever, then they can stack. But if they're the same value, then they don't stack in most of my testing and knowledge of classes and stuff like that. Zix, do you, you kind of been sneaking around the like changes? Do you know what the deep the re, DB the, the DP reduction is on beheading the dead? No, no. You have to find out tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm really curious. I I kind of I would like for them to stack. That'd be kind of cool. It'd kind of like help out. But either way, that's like an interesting. It hits a lot of people, so that's an interesting like I guess large scale buff for ninja but the skills just a lot more unprotected now um we're just more unprotected in general and then another really 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 big one is going to be the blade spin is not going to float anymore which small scale fine like i have plenty of combos um that i can use that were like i don't have to worry about f like the blade spin floating like getting in the way but blade skin was such an amazing engage for 
um, large scale. So it's going to really hurt. Even though the super armor was um, only applied at like the peak of the jump. So you're still a little bit, um, it's still dangerous to kind of use because you can get knocked down in the very beginning of it. But it, it's a pretty big hit for ninjas. It was a really good engage tool. Really good engage. It was a good fallback. Um, you know, it was really... <laughs> Okay, all right. It was really it can it can hit behind you a little bit. It had good AOE. It was just a super good CC like in general. So I'm kind of sad about losing it. The small scale, I'll, what the fuck ever. I'm still a ninja. It doesn't bother me too much. But it's a pretty big nerf again to large scale. So in general, ninja and kuno are just getting fucking slapped in the fucking face for large scale. And I mean like, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Like this large scale getting nerfed so fucking hard for like ninjas and kunos. I don't know. Look at Striker. What about Striker? Exactly. Do you think they have like bad large scale or? or... No, 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 no. I'm joking. If you look at Striker on these patch notes, nothing's changed. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, apparently there's some changes on the like large or on the uh, what global patch notes, but it's. It's not. It's it's not significant. I'll I'll say it right now. It's um. It's a change on ultimate crush, mm -hmm. and it's basically a, a more fluid transition to uh, a cancel that it can do, and they're changing something with Echo Spirit, but um on that skill. But overall, ultimate crush is not a big skill that anybody uses. Uh, so it's it's pretty much a, a another neutral patch for striker. I see. Okay. I mean, I don't really see too much i mean i don't obviously don't play the class but i don't really know what they looking at the, all these changes i don't really know what they'd add or take away from striker anyway and because i don't really know if you i don't feel like you guys need anything I, like i said i don't play the class but maybe they're just kind of scared to touch you guys because you could be broken again other than maybe like the magic dp but um that you, like resistance that you guys have and stuff like that but we'll see because they, they, they did change uh mystics evasion but we'll, we'll get to that but <laughs> To wrap out the ninja, wrap up the ninja and kuno changes. It's a huge nerf it's to large. I mean, you're not wrong scale. about either. Yeah. Okay. And like the so, holy shit. There we go. But yeah, it's like so, it's a huge like nerf in terms of a uh, large scale. And I don't know if they're meaning to do that to kind of like, so, like uh, like solidify their like roles as small scale fighters and like. Sorry. To like take away the amount of power like a maybe a high AP ninja had, mm, pardon me. Had in large scale. But um it, it's just overall a huge change. And I'm kinda curious to see how easy it is now to catch ninjas out in uh, large scale and see if they still do a lot. But I mean any class with like, you know, high AP would do a lot of damage. So maybe they just thought they're too good at large scale again. I don't know. Because when the game when Ninjas and Kunos first came out they were gar not so much kunos ever, but I mean, when the uh, Ninjas Awakening first came out stuff, I mean, they were known for being garbage at large scale for a really long time. Nobody played them at all because um, everybody was always protected and Ninja was the least protected. So like nobody played them because they were garbage in large scale. So I feel like they're kind of we're getting towards that meta again. We're like nobody will want to play Ninja because they're so garbage and unprotected in large scale again, um, even more so because some people are getting more protection now anyway. Um, I'm moving over to them. You might hear me bitch a lot in the next coming minutes because I played the game for so long and these changes I'm about to talk about really bother me. <laughs> but, but, uh, speaking of Ninja being solidified as a good 1v1 class in Kuno, the changes to Warrior, um, are insane in my opinion. And it's just a massive buff just in general. Like, it is huge. I'm gonna put some on the edge of the on the side of the screen here, um, for those of you watching instead of listening. But well, let me move them over a little bit. the The changes are just absolutely great. They're they're amazing changes for the class, and none of the changes that I think Warrior needed <laughs> for the most part, because most Warriors, if you talk to them. Like the biggest thing that they would complain about, almost the only thing they could complain about, because the right even right now to this like at this very moment, they're amazing duelists. They're amazing duelists. Like they're super super strong, and and um 
in 1v1s and then in very small scale fights. Super strong. Um, they have amazing debuffs, amazing speed, a lot of damage, and um, and a lot of and a decent amount of protection for themselves. Uh, they have dashes, movement, um, pretty much anything a class would want. The only thing that the warriors were really hurting in was large scale because they lost their lingering super armor and they don't have any long range or good movement abilities that are protected to get them in and out of fights for like engages in terms of large scale. So like what I thought they were going to change was like that pre-awakened dash that warriors have. Um, what's it called, Zix? That like pre-awakened dash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they like run really fast with their shield in front of them. Uh, it's a shield charge. So that if you cast shield charge, if you hit an enemy, you stop, and like it interrupts. Um, what I thought they were gonna do was make it to where that doesn't stop if you hit an enemy. And then like, so like kind of like take away player collision and give it super armor. I think that would have been like a great change because it's super fast, it's long range. And um, it was it would have been like a huge engage for warriors um, or disengage. Ooh. Wait, wait, are you talking about shield charge or are you talking about uh, black spirit rush or I forgot what it's called? It's you, you probably aren't talking about that. No, you probably aren't talking about it's something you get like literally like level 14. Like it's 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 probably shield charge. Yeah. So, but the changes that are coming to Warrior is basically um, I'll kind of go them down the list a little bit here. But I, I can su can I sum it up because it's gonna yeah. be quick. Yeah, yeah, go it, ahead. A lot, a lot of this is pointless. Um, pretty much, uh, the big changes are gonna be super armor for fully on slashing. It did so the giant vertical leap that you do. Mm -hmm. Uh, previously, you, that skill used to be able to be punished super hard because you're stuck, but you Is have no the protection. Somersault? Yeah, it's the it's a somersault. Yeah, it's a somersault, okay. the red somersault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, okay. You used, used to be able to cut at the end of that all the time. Yes, yeah. Um, the other one is the ability to cancel uh, your sh your shield, which is pretty big. Um, I wouldn't say it's massive, but it is pretty big. It's it's a nice quality of life. I think it's gonna bring up a lot of combos changes and certain things can we talk about the, this, the shield cancel for a second yeah yeah so i'm going to show this on screen as well and i completely think that like it's going to be amazing for the uh amazing for the class like i'm looking at the gifts now i don't know if i i didn't send you the gifts but um i think it's huge i think this is one of the biggest and like best changes that warrior is getting because they're going to be able to literally cancel anything and basically a super armor I know the block isn't a super armor, it's a frontal guard and then like resistance in the back. But I mean, good good luck getting behind a warrior anyway. And I mean, it's basically super armor. So being able to cancel, uh, not anything, not, not everything, but almost everything with a, a super armor is pretty fucking insane. Like imagine getting attacked, boop, he's super armor. You know what I mean? I, I feel like this is just, I think this might even be overlooked. And I think this is one of the biggest and like fucking insane changes that warrior is getting and super... It's just super insanely good and might even be broken, but unless you disagree. I, I think it's good. I think it's good. I, I personally don't think it's broken. I think it's it's good. Okay. Uh, it makes him really strong in 1v1s, of course. Yeah. And it makes him even better in large scale. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something that it's, it, it, it's definitely needed for certain, uh, certain aspects where you just kind of stuck uh as a warrior but it's definitely a good a big buff uh to to them of course mm -hmm. but go on go on with what you're uh talking about after uh, the shield yeah yeah so the other one is grab from awaken which i think is another nice buff mm -hmm. uh i don't think it's broken but because it from what i could tell it's like it it shaves off a little bit of time for switching but not a large amount where I think it's going to be a big difference. I see. Um, but it, it is like, it's, it's a, it's a few, few microseconds. It, it, you know, it, it could matter, but it's, it's not super big. Um, a big one is definitely ground smash super armor. I, I, I didn't know this until they, they told, um, they said this, but ground smash super armor is probably number one change. Um, because, at the moment, Warrior only has, I think, two protected CCs, which mm -hmm. is forward shield charge. Right. And 
uh, chopping kick. Everything else is either just protected and no CC or CC and uh, no protection, right. which I think is a pretty big deal since I think every class has at least three plus two or four protected CCs that are like viable. I, I, I didn't know this until now, but Warrior only had like two. Uh, that, that one is pretty big. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much anything like crazy besides um, what was it called? Uh, bounce track, uh, mm -hmm. movement uh, increase, which is pretty big. I think that's a nice one for um one v ones. It's it's definitely a one v one ability. And piercing spear is 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 nice for you know just artillery. Right. What are they doing with uh, overall, piercing spear? Was it damage or something? Or I didn't actually no, no, it's a uh, reduce uh, WP. Uh, did they put that in? Okay, actually, yeah. They uh, put I think the in. issue were cooldown time gets reset when some skills are. Uh, I don't it's, know if they did. It says ninety-five to fifty. Yeah, they did. They did. Put okay, it. okay. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. ninety-five to fifty. It's pretty much half. Uh, I think. <laughs> for, I'll say this for sure. Warrior in Shadow Arena already broken. I know you guys know that Warrior in Shadow Arena is going to be broken or already broken. It's gonna be even more broken with these changes. Yeah. With super armor on ground smash, half in, or actually no spear doesn't matter because it's full resources. Mm -hmm. But the other one was the cancel. Uh, that's that's gonna make the class a lot more, uh, a lot stronger in Shadowing. I'll say that for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I, I mean, I would argue that Warrior is gonna have almost all CCs protected because they can cancel them with Q. So, so we'll see. Because I because I think the I'm curious to see if Grave Diggers. Do you know what hit that the debuff um, uh, procs? It's the second, it's the second it's hit. The second. Yeah, okay. it's when you go down. When you go down, like hit mm -hmm. the ground. I see. Yeah. So, so the way Grave Digger works is that you jump up and spin, and then mm -hmm. when you you come back down, the second part hits is the uh, debuff. I see. Okay. Because what I was kind of hoping wouldn't happen was because you know the Zerkers have that I call it like baby rage, but when they like scream and then they slam the ground and they get a, a movement debuff on you. An attack yeah. speed debuff. So, yes. Um, so I know that they can just cast that and like cancel it right away just to give you the debuff. So I was really curious if Warriors are going to be able to literally just like like half cast uh, Gravedigger and then just like cancel it instantly with Q and just like just to give you the debuff and say, you know, fuck all of the damage. I just want to give you this debuff as fast as possible. And then and then go in with like a full combo or something, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm really curious. Um, but so you said it's on the second hit, so that's good. But maybe they won't be able to cancel it and just give you the debuff instantly. So, um, either way, I think this is huge for Warrior. And when I first started the game, um, I mean when the game came out, even like because I started the game when the game came out. I mean, Warriors have I say this all the time too, like on my stream. But Warriors have always been, and will always be, in my opinion, the baby, like the firstborn child of Cacao and like Pearl Abyss, they love the class so much. And I think it's, I was so surprised when the class like got nerfed as much as it did. And, um, but I knew they were going to come back and this is it. <laughs> and I've always hated warriors. Warriors have always been so amazing. They were the first ones to get their awakening when the awakenings came out and they had their awakening like a week before everybody else. <laughs> they just ran everything. So I'm really curious to see how warriors play with these uh, new buffs. I'm I'm a little bit nervous to be completely honest. So, um, but anywho, moving away from warriors, so I don't go on a tangent again. Um, um. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Uh, <laughs> so berserker, um, not a whole lot's getting changed for berserker. I kind of feel bad. They've had a bugged iframe for like seven and a half years now, and then oh, like. Man. <laughs> Fake coming in with these amazing responses. What a what a what a proud striker. I love it. He definitely belongs to the Ook family. This is no fucking doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but not a lot of changes. They just a lot of like fixes to Zerker, but none of the changes that they need. I'm kind of curious if they're legitimately just gonna leave it here, or um, kind of fix the class more. Not really sure to be to be honest, but they definitely need um, a little bit more buffs and protection. I mean, they're giving Warrior more protection, um, like a lot more protection. So I don't know why they wouldn't give Zerkers more protection because they're like one of the least protected classes now. 
So, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they're doing with Zerker, to be completely honest. I really feel bad for him. But a, a good Zerker, maybe they're just scared to touch it, kind of like they are with Ninja sometimes. Because a geared Zerker and a good Zerker, I'd argue that Zerker is one of the hardest classes to play in the game, other than Tamer. I think Tamer's one. Of, I think Tamer's the hardest class. Um, I think they're about tied. But Zerker is an extremely difficult class to play. But if you master the class, or not even master, but like get very good at the class and have like you know really good PvP sense, I mean Zerkers are absolutely fucking terrifying, and they're extremely good. And they do insane damage with um, good gear. So I think maybe they're just kind of scared to touch Zerker. Because if they buff it too much, then these people who are already that good at the class are just going to be almost untouchable. Because um, that's kind of like the difficulty in touching classes is you want it to kind of have a decent skill floor. But you want it to have a high skilling. High skilling? New word. Created now. 2019 skill ceiling <laughs> as well so i'm i'm curious to see what they do but i definitely think that they should make a because you don't want it to make it just too easy of a class to play so where it gets taken advantage of and it's like very 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 good you know I, but good i kind of i kind of always thought this um this is i think that definitely it, it's one of those like tipping point characters in the game because zerkers are super fast. I think they're probably one of the most, I th I, in terms of like abilities and usage and maneuverability in, in the field, I think they're number one. I don't mm -hmm. think Musa beats them just because just you're like kind of stuck in the dash. But while Zerker has like quick dashes, so you can use abilities in between. Mm -hmm. They're like, if you, if you see a good Zerker, he, he can be literally be like half, half across the map like a Musa, but oh, yeah. have the mad ability to use anything. And mm -hmm. this is kind of similar to. What I thought back in the day about ninjas, uh, where everybody had CC, everybody had protection, except for ninja. Mm -hmm. And I thought that if they were to touch that class, that class would be broken, just as because you guys had the APM, you're the APM class. Right. So if you're if you have more protection, pretty much godlike in the field mm -hmm. back back in the day. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. No, I mean you're right. I think that's what I think that's the problem with a lot of classes is they're just scared to touch it, so they don't, you know. And I kind of hope they get away from that a little bit and kind of utilize the global test servers a little like more, because I mean that's what they're there for. Because I feel like whenever they come up with changes, they just kind of like write it down on paper and they think about it for a while, and then they just like enact it, you know. Like I I really don't think that they play test these changes really i think they just sit down um and like fucking say fuck it Does, these are the things that we think needs to happen based off of what we've seen however the fuck they get their knowledge from because i never see gms floating around or you know uh, <laughs> like that's i want to chime in real quick on that yeah, yeah. sorry but um the warrior changes there's a skill in there that i didn't mention because it's completely pointless it's called shield or sorry, War Cry. And it's getting a four guard added into it. And what the skill does, if no one of course knows about it, um, is that it's a stationary debuff where you just smack your shield and in the corner in front of you, they just get debuffed. That's it. What's it, the what's the debuff? It's like a minus like ten DP or something. Or fifteen. It's think... a very small AoE. It's you know the shift right click in Warrior? It's like the giant uh, slam, and it's like a giant um, AOE, but it only does like no damage and debuffs. Well, they might have done that for the new large scale, not large scale, but the new, um, well, I guess maybe large scale, but also they might have done that for the uh, the new grinding areas coming out, because they said that they're trying, that they're coming out with like group grind spots now. So maybe it's where like it can act, because it acts as a taunt towards mobs, right? Am I wrong? I don't know what it does because no one ever fucking uses it. Right. But I know for sure that you are not going to use it in any circumstance, no matter what iteration, because it's super long. Oh, animation. it's an, okay. And you're, you'd rather just dash and like fucking smack someone in the ass with the, the spank. Like, right, right, the spank's right. getting a buff, guys. <laughs> you can spank <laughs> faster now. So I don't think you don't want to use Warcry. Okay, got you. Okay, I didn't know you were locked in the animation. So, yeah, my only thought could be maybe like... um. Maybe uh, blah, 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 like grinding or whatever in these group grind spots to 
taunt and add as a debuff, but maybe not. I don't. The point, but I, I do what you see what you're saying. I was trying to play devil's advocate a little bit there, but I see what you're saying. You're saying why the fuck would they even touch that? Like nobody uses it at all ever. So that means that they don't play their class. <laughs> and um, I and uh, yeah, and I agree. I think I don't know. I don't know how they come up with these changes. I I've never. I kind of said this on stream, but I've never said this on like a video or anything either. And I guess this is the perfect opportunity to say it on YouTube is with these talks. That's what they're there for. But um, one thing that really bothers me about uh, this company and like Pearl Abyss and everything is they've always had like an elitist attitude and how they handle things and how they make their changes and how they view their community. And I don't blame them to like, um, and let me finish here. And like, I don't blame them like for having that attitude because the majority of the community and just gaming communities in general are a bunch of crybaby bitches who you know slap their fist on things until they get what they want and they think they're the most intelligent correct person in the entire existence of forever who's ever just walked to the earth and they're and what they're talking about and um but um so i, I get why they have that attitude that kind of like elitist we're not going to listen to you attitude but there's definitely ways that they could have went around that and talked to people who play the game consistently, who've come off as cool headed people and, um, and they can reach like a, like a line of communication with a good example is like, and I'm not the only one here. I'm not just stroking my own dick here. Like I'm talking about a lot of different people who are in the same shoes as I am, but like I've played this game since literally before day one, I've been in the beta tests when I have, I have played Ninja um, and I'm not, again, I'm not the most knowledgeable person ever. There's definitely more knowledgeable people than me, but I'm making an example, I'm t t like making an example here. But like I've played Ninja since it was released, like a minute one, like I logged into the servers, like when they came up from maintenance on minute one, played the class and never rolled off. And I have over 111 days active on my Ninja and almost none of it is AFK time for the most part. Um, because like I can't AFK as a, as a red name, obviously. So like. I have 111 days. That's you know thousands. That's a couple thousand hours. Um, and then, not to mention, I'm I'm pretty sure it's around a thousand or so. Anyway, um, and then, uh, and I've played the class consistently. You know, I stream. I I PvP nonstop. I I you know I, I at least have a little bit of insight on this class. You know, just a little bit. A couple thousand hours. You know, PvP literally 24/7. I, I might know maybe one tiny thing that could benefit or that would be worth nerfing on the class. But I don't know and I've never heard of Pearl of or Cacao going out to um, these people who play these classes for so long and have an amazing amount of knowledge and ask them about changes or ask them to test something or, or put them on the global test labs and like let people play around first and form an opinion like... You know, people like Big and Shiny, he, the amount of knowledge that he has is just insane. I mean, Fake Uniform is a content creator and who plays Striker, and he learns his class well. He reads the skills. You know, he's just recently joined a more um, intensive PvP guild and um, has to definitely try a lot harder in his class now and, and gain more knowledge. So he's been paying attention, and he has hundreds of hours of gameplay on um, on Striker. And you're just, he doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna fucking do that. I knew it. <laughs> and and um and you can definitely and go and definitely like, God, God fucking damn it. And you can definitely go through the community and like find these people who have knowledge and who could form, you know, an opinion and not even like take what they say like as gospel, but just get their opinion on it. And, and I think there's just as many, and I know that I'm naming content creators, but there's just as many people they could have reached through in game means who maybe owned a guild for a long time. And they have all the statistics they need. You know, if they just looked at my stats in game, they're like, oh, this person's killed literally thousands of people. <laughs> he's like, like, he's got to be at least halfway decent. He has hundreds of hours on this class. Let's shoot him a message. Shoot him an email. How cool would that be to get an email from Pearl Abyss or Cacao? Like, hey, you know, we would like to have your opinion on like this class. And like people would be like, holy shit, fuck yeah! They they'd probably make a Reddit post, you know, say, hey, look, I just got I just got contacted by the company asking for my opinion, you know, like, but they like Cacao and the Pearl Abyss has never made a Reddit post, and and I know I'm talking about Reddit, but I don't really have 
I'm, they could have made a forum post like saying, hey, what what changes would you guys like to see? Would the majority of people say, oh, uh, if I, you know, they'd just be completely alleg- like uncomprehensible and it'd be stupid. But there would be some solid feedback in there. And I think they should definitely be a little bit more um, Iron Hammer or Iron Fist against the people who want a 110% troll like them if they were to come out and ask for our opinion on a few things. So I... I know I just went on like a massive fucking tangent there. Like, I, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I understand where you come from. It is you know, it, it does make sense. Like, you know, the Global Lab is all about testing. They have that feedback, submit feedback system on the like the left side, and I think that's great and all, but I think that's not that helpful. Being to the fact where this game is super competitive, people are super volatile in their opinions. And I'm I'm pretty sure most of that submit feedback is about some class raging about another class, probably Mystic. Let's mm. say that. Yeah. And I don't think it's always objectively, or and, you know, class chains aren't objective, but like let's say I don't think they're always the best opinions on people. You think they're subjective? And, yeah, they're subject. That's what I meant to say. They're they're super like you know the opinions are subjective, but I think they're even more subjective when you're talking about a different class mm-hmm. and i think that they you know the uh the creators should reach out uh to you know like the top players definitely at least their region in korea i i i don't know you know have we haven't heard anything about them reaching out ever but i do hope that they do at least their region mm-hmm. just asking like the players like the top players top streamers uh about you know the changes like fake uniform like ask you know what what what, did, what does he think about what should, what should they buff what should they nerf about striker or like big and shiny what should they nerf about you know witch and wizards which is everything you know <laughs> cut like, says the exactly, striker says exactly the striker. like i'm saying every <laughs> class or person has an, an opinion about a different class and it's probably sometimes wrong like i just did yeah I mean, worst case, they should have an opinion on their own, I guess. I'm asking for people to be humble also, you know? Like, I would love to see stiffness get removed from block jump, you know? I think that would cause a lot of the bad ninjas to re-roll and to get pissed off. And, because, I mean, that's something that you should never bank on as a ninja. And a lot of ninjas bank on it, and they get rewarded from it just fucking block jumping. I think block jump's a great skill. I think it's really cool the ninja has it. And I think it can definitely be overpowered because that makes bad people too good at the class. And... And I'm not trying to sound like an elitist here, like, you know, I, I don't need broad jump or, you know, something like that. But um, I'm saying that you should always get past that as a player. And I think it's too much of a crutch, maybe, is what I'm trying to get at. So I would have liked to see that get removed even. I mean, that would have really helped me out. Honestly, getting stiffness removed from block jump would help me out tremendously <laughs> with my combos and stuff. Um, oh, um, God. <laughs> so you guys kind of have a block jump too. Get out of here. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're saying and I agree with you that people would be like way over the top with it, but either way, they should at least find those people who would not be over the top with it. I mean, yeah, cause I mean, they've gone to some content creators about some random shit, you know? So, I mean, they should just extend the, and I'm, again, I don't mean just content creators, but just easy people to point out and who are, have a lot more, I don't want to overuse the word content, but just have content out there to prove that they're like, a you know uh, a smooth minded smooth minded a like a like a re- a um, relaxed person or like a level headed there we go um, level headed <laughs> relax <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not big uniform but you know play people like big and shiny <laughs> or, or, yeah uh, um. But moving on with the uh, with the class changes and everything before I start bitching again and going on. Like rapid fire these class things. I know, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so Tamer's getting like a massive, massive, massive buff. Not okay. Don't not you okay. dare laugh. <laughs> not like a massive, massive, massive buff, but like um, it, it's definitely going to help them out in large scale. And it's making them a viable class finally in large scale because they were pretty hurt in large scale. I mean, how how many tamers have? Ask yourself right now, like, how many tamers have you guys seen in large scale? I see more tamers in Shadow Arena than I've seen in the game. Exactly. Exactly. Like, 
You just never <clears throat> see it. What are you going to say, Fig? Ook. God damn it. <laughs> Baited. So, Why would you even uh, ask? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I, I knew I was going to set myself up. All right. So, basically, uh, made an improvement on evasion so that it can be used uh, when moving forward, even though, uh, even though the skill is locked, which is kind of interesting. Um, I wish I had a tamer in here to kind of spit some knowledge in. I would really, really enjoy um, to have, I don't know, maybe one person like Rain <clears throat> um, come into the comments and kind of like shed some light on the class as well. Definitely, I recommend going through the comments down below um, and I'll be looking very on my podcast. Well, on all my YouTube comments, I always read them and um, and reply to the ones that um, that uh, that I want to reply to. But, but tamer tastes like candy. Ooh, tastes like banana. <laughs> so like I definitely i recommend going down into the comments and like uh and taking a look at the comments on podcasts on the podcast videos because they're usually really strong comments and like all favorite the ones or like love the ones who um who have some who share insight on the classes that we talk about to kind of like uh make it more understood how the changes are affecting the class because i mean i'm not I don't, I don't play all these classes, you know, I, I only have, I have limited knowledge. Most of the knowledge of my classes are based off of fighting them, not playing as them. So like, oh. I can tell you like, you know, all the things and all the ways that I catch a striker, you know, like I can tell you what has super armor for the most part, but I don't know skill names really about strikers class for the most part. I don't know, you know, neither like, do they. Know, like, <laughs> Neither do they. <laughs> I, 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 you have no idea how many strikers in the striker discord <laughs> goes are, are, are clueless. <laughs> yeah, good point. Maybe I picked the wrong class to talk about here <laughs> for this example. But the point is, like, I I I go by sight and I go by fighting with my knowledge on the class, not per se, you know, like a not like a playing the class does. Um, cause I just rather play ninja. I don't like playing other classes that much, but my point here is, uh, so definitely if you play these classes and we're talking about them, I definitely urge you to chime in, um, and like ch either challenge, challenge what I said here, um, or, uh, or like just chime in and throw more knowledge there and I'll favorite your comment. Um, but basically, uh, super armor is going to be, they're getting more protection for the most part. Um, and then... Uh, so made an improvement so Highlane will counter if Highlane or Tamer is attacked while summoning which is kind of interesting they had the they changed the cooldown on um, for spawning Highlane but I don't really think that's a huge fucking deal at all um, but so they apply super armor to it and then Highlane will uh, counter if they get attacked while summoning so I'm kind of curious if maybe Tamers will use that as like protection and also like a counter attack because Ninja used to have a counter attack on their um, on their block, which I'm actually so sad they got removed. It was a long time ago, but if you if you hold down Q, um, Ninja has a block, and then if you left click, it did an ability that kind of like waved the sword around, and then you stunned people with it, and it was a counter. Fucking loved it. It was amazing. Like not enough ninjas used it, in my opinion. It was so great, and I was so sad that it got removed. I was really surprised because I I never saw ninjas use it. Um, but it got removed. So I'm kind of curious if tamers are going to use this as like a counter ability. Um, I just wish we could get that back. I just made myself miss it again. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what I miss? What? Poor guy need hammer. Oh, no, dude. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Where is there a knee kick? I can't remember what it was. It's, it's been so long. I forgot about the skill's name. Right. I think it was knee hammer. I remember you talking about it a lot. Yeah, dude. Disney Hammer, Pepe Hands. <laughs> Ooh, hammer. Yes. I'm not sad. You don't deserve it. <laughs> but continue. They're changing the accuracy. Um, I'm gonna just cut through this as fast as possible. But they're taking down stamina usage. You know. Um, holy shit. My mouse. There we go. And uh, they're giving a lot more damage to some abilities as well. I mean, I'm talking about a decent amount of damage here as you can see and they're also changing um the crit rate on some things uh i don't know uh the effectiveness of a lot of these changes 
Um, but from what I've heard and scooped around, because I'm I obviously did a decent amount of research. I'm not just coming into this like oh here. But um, from what I've gathered and what a lot of tamers are saying, you know, all three of them, uh, they it, it's a good it's a good buff, and they're gonna definitely be more viable in large scale. Um, and then it's argued they're gonna be maybe like uh, they're gonna be. I've made a tier list before, but I'd say like mid tier or maybe even upper mid tier in terms of large scale. Um, and definitely just overall improved and uh, the effective range of void lightning has been increased which is a massive 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 change um, because that was their largest void is their largest like it's like a trap CC it's basically kind of a fuck you to Kunos because Kunos got their tenon cutter removed completely and now they've just and they increased the range of void for tamer which I believe yep. is the ma yeah. <laughs> the massive yeah. CC <laughs> but did you read the thing under? It says for a guard effect, the void lightning has been changed to super armor. Exactly. So these are definitely. I say that's probably the biggest change for tamers, um, which makes it a super viable large scale class. Was you're gonna see tamers now basically iframe, iframe, iframe in the middle of everybody, and they cast void and then stun everybody. Or no, is it a stiffen? It's a stiffen. Stiffen everybody inside. They're basically going to be the new Kunos in large scale, to be completely honest. And if one, if you're not scared of this already, you should be in the future. But Tamer's 100% is really large, and it is really fucking strong. So I guarantee you what we're all going to see now in um, in large scale is we're going to see either a PA Tamer or just no PA Tamer, but just come into the middle of a formation and go in, cast a Void, stiffen like 100 people and then cast their 100 percent and kill 100 people so it's going to be kind of interesting for sure and it's a huge buff to tamers and i'm sure they're all very happy and i'm really curious how much the effective range has been increased because that's going to be pretty crazy in terms of small scale too it's going to be a really strong um zoning ability and a huge fallback probably um for is them void, is void lightning do cc yeah Really? Yeah, it's a stiffness. I'm almost possible. I'm, I'm looking it up. It doesn't say it on mm -hmm. this, but I'm. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe let me look up a um, tamer skill tree really quick. I gotta be careful what I Google here, but um, I know void is one of the things that it's like a massive trap with all the uh, like black blotches going around. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a giant AOE. I could have. I could have sworn it was a stiffness. Hmm. Interesting. Either way, the fact that it has super armor now is going to be very large. And um, an increase in the range is important. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. We that will skill see. would be insane if it had CC. It what, just looks nasty. That's what I'm saying. We'll look it up and kind of see. And we'll um, we'll determine. Ooh. <laughs> And, an, yeah, another uh, really strong suggestion from Fake. Thank you, Fake. Appreciate that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really strong insight. Well, let me see. All right, I'm bringing up the uh, the skill tree now. We're gonna kind of look at it because I'm really curious now. Who can the comment section if I have the best things to say? All right. So moving on from uh, Tamer as we look through that. I mean, because they call the the thing void at least. Um, from whenever I got CC'd by it. But anywho. I mean, this skill would be weird without CC. Because it's just a stationary AoE. That's what I'm saying. I'm almost positive it has a stiffness to it. Which one is... Uh, I'm going to look it up. Let's see. Tree climb. Blah, blah, blah. Is it awakening or pre-awakening ability? It's, it's pre-awakened. It's in the middle. Uh, it's like a blue slices. Blue slices? Okay, void lightning. There it is. Let's see. Right here. So avoid lightning right here. Forward guard while using it. Oh, let me see it used again. We're going to use it on the gift there. Oh, no, hold on. There we go. Oh, this gift is so long. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, no, it's not a CC. Mm -mm. No, it's not. It just does good damage, um, I believe. Looks like it. 722 yeah, yeah. times 13. Pretty lot. And it's a debuff as well. To, and attack speed attack speed minus 20%, which is actually really, really large. I see now. Okay, I know I know what this is. And what the fuck is the other ability that's void? 
because they call it void is it where like it like cc's like a million people at once it's the tiger one you talking about yeah yeah it's a high lane ability i'm pretty sure like the black blotch is going all over the place yeah yeah i know that ability I don't, uh, know, I don't know by they, name though. I don't know either. They called it like the Tamers call it void, which is what's really um which is what's really confusing me. Is it surging tide maybe? No. I don't know. That's fucking weird. Not lightning of the earth. Hmm. Interesting. That's whiplash. Bolt wave, that's definitely not it. Tamers are confusing, man. Where is this ability? It's so strong. I don't know. Is it awakening? No. It's not it, moonlight strike. One second, I've got to. I got to look at the gifts. This is what I'm talking about. That like I know the classes by look, but I don't know. Oh like, no! I know. I know. I got it. I was thinking this in my head, but it needs to have high laying out to do stiffness. That's what it is. It's the same skill. It's called void. It does do stiffness, but you need to have the dog out. Oh, by so yes, it is a big buff because it has super armor now. Okay, 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 okay. So when you have high lane out and you cast a void lightning, then then it does the stiffness. Yeah, it says stiffness effects on high lane void lightning. I see. Okay, okay. See, god damn it, dude. These skill trees, man. This is the problem with the game too. Is like all these like hidden things within classes and stuff like that, like fine print. Fine print in general, but either way. Okay, so yeah, it's a massive buff. It's a huge range for um, Void Lightning now, a lot larger, and then it's gonna reply or do a stiffness as well. So you have to have Highline out in order for it to do the stiffness. Okay, this okay. is like new Grave Digger, dude. That's what I'm saying. It's it's very 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 good. A very good change. Um, dude, they just got fucked. I know, and then Tamer's got like it's literally like a flip flop. Tamers just got massively buffed. And hey, dude, then... we to Tamers right now, guys. <laughs> hey, man, I've said for a long time that Tamers are the best 1v1 class in the game, so now they're just more viable in large scale, too. I think we're going to see more Tamers now, but we'll see. Because a lot of people start off as Tamers, and then they learn that they're garbage at large scale. So they're like, they just kind of roll off, because they just get fucked, especially because they take more magic damage. And, like, 90% of um, damage... In large scales, magic damage because <laughs> there's just abilities flying all over the place from witches and wizards like the entire time. Fuck. There we go. Privileged ukers. Mm -hmm. It's true though. So, going back to uh, uh, the other classes, Valkyrie, nothing like crazy, but it is a good buff regardless. I can sum it up right now for you. A little bit less stamina usage, so like just like one of their legs are broken now. And then they have a slightly more range and then slightly more burst damage. And that's about it. Um, nothing like that's absolutely insane. And then that's it, really. Just like a little bit a little bit less stamina usage and then a little bit more burst, a little bit more range. Nothing too tremendous. I mean, Valkyrie is already an extremely strong class, in my opinion. Very, very, very strong class. It's just very obviously that their legs are a little bit broken. Um, in terms of large scale, but again, we all know how much people like uh, over exaggerate. So I could have seen them taking a, maybe a little bit less stamina off of like a few dashes they have, but that's about it. Because I mean, for like maybe a week or two, Valkyrie, maybe maybe even three, Valkyrie was like a straight up battleship. I mean, like USS Carrier, fucking battleship. They were a tactical nuke on wheels, man. So. I'm not I'm not upset that they got nerfed a little bit and they're like kind of cautiously buffing it. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I got a gift for you from Reddit. About what, Valkyrie? Yeah, of the buff. All right, I'll take Apparently. A, I'll take a look at it. Just PM it to me on Discord. We'll show. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. It was a Reddit post? Okay, let's see. Yeah. All right. What? Valkyrie movement. Oh, before the in before the incoming buffs. Really? I think. Uh oh! It says this is in a this isn't a big deal because it's not viable because it's not protected. Apparently, but it's 
I have a hard time believing that's not viable. That's pretty good movement. I mean, it's good. It's good for walking around, but I think it's it's like uh, it's only protection on on uh, or off cooldown. So that's probably why it's not valuable. It's like if I spam warrior dash all the time, but huh. I'm gonna get punished. It's a good way to close distance, though. I mean, like definitely though. That's interesting. That says she ran out of WP, not stamina. Interesting. Why haven't I seen a Valkyrie ever do that though? I know that you said it's unprotected, and I, you know, if I'm fighting a Valkyrie, they don't want to be unprotected. But that's interesting, huh? Okay, that's kind of like another thing I'm talking about. Is like, I feel like a lot of there's a lot of untapped potential in classes and things that people don't know about. Like I know that Ranger has a lot more protection than what people give it. Um, Ranger actually has a lot more protection than what people give it. Now, you know, am I saying that they're, you know, much better, you know, that they're like amazing and that people don't have a right to complain about a few things? No, but I definitely know that Ranger has more protection than what people um, give it credit for. Because I definitely know a difference between like fighting a Ranger who knows that and fighting a Ranger who doesn't know that or at least utilize it. So um, the change of the striker is extremely important and very, very uh, in depth. And I'm really surprised with the change. But, yeah, uh, can I go over uh, these actually uh, in detail? Of course, go ahead. Okay, uh, first change. Okay, thank you. Mm, okay. And, <laughs> this is a round of applause. <laughs> the change with Mystic is actually did really I nice. did I cover it all? Uh, yeah, I think I, you got everything. I think you got everything. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah pretty yeah. much. Uh, Mystic, however, uh, has some changes, and I'm happy about it and i think it's kind of important and from all the mystics that i've personally talked to they they were okay with the changes and they think it's fair um which is good and i agree but the effect of the evasion rate up has been removed when using nature's wrath and the effect um of evasion rate up by uh, rapid stream has been adjusted as below and wait that shit used to be 15 percent. what the fuck uh, yeah that's insane yep yeah. 15% um, evasion rate up. So that's crazy. That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot, a lot. On a class that already has very high evasion and um, a lot of DR as well. So um, I'm really glad that they've changed that. So it's, Mystics aren't going to be as tanky anymore, especially for classes that have, you know, lower accuracy and stuff. Um, and also... Uh, Let's see, they changed the uh, the HP recovery slightly by Hurricane Sweep. And they removed uh, Forward Guard from Twisted Collision, which is their, basically the, uh, it's like the, Uppercut. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure you can. Mm -hmm. And then um, Forward Guard and Stun on good hits have been removed from Thunder Pound as well, which is really interesting. And the movement speed will now increase by 20% for 20 seconds at all levels of flash step and silent step, which is, I mean, mystics have always been really fast. So, um, nothing tremendous, but they're basically just making the class less tanky and then taking away a little bit of protection from them, which I think is important. And I mean, I'm okay with all those changes and everybody else pretty much is too. Um, and I'm happy about it. I think overall, they, it, it's the same thing as like, how they do all their changes there's always some good and there's always some bad and they just can't fucking get away from it they just can't stop doing like it's like every they have like an equal and opposite equal and um, opposite reaction like if they take away something great from a class they also like take away something awful for the class it's like and vice versa among like cl other classes as well or just from the game in general they do something great and you're like wow good job pa good shit and then you like read the next line and then you're like wow what the fuck pa <laughs> so they're kind of how they've been doing these class changes also some changes are like what the fuck and then other class uh, other changes are like okay all right cool 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 so <laughs> As we were talking on this podcast, they had another Global Lab patch note release. Yeah. And the effect of Super Armor of Black Moonlight has been removed and added stiffness. So I think, I don't know what Black Moonlight is, but you got Super Armor removed, but your stiffness is back. Well, that's good. This is Skuno Ninja. 
So it sounds like they accidentally reversed it. Oh my fucking god. They're probably like legitimately like just... God damn it, dude. So... <laughs> well, looks like we gotta start the hour over again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm happy about it. I never used Black Moonlight for the... Um, for the protection anyway so now that it has stiffness that's good so i'm happy about that change and i'm okay with that then um, if we start over i don't even remember what i said <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to do a barney style man so i'll just cue, I'll, cue, I'll cue you i'll cue your ooks ah thank you <laughs> minimal effort um but other, other than the class changes i mean I guess they're overall fine. I th they're trying their best to balance the game as best they can, but I don't. I just don't know why they wanted to take away large scale so much from Kuno and Ninja, and um, and like give it to other classes. I, I don't want to sound like I'm pandering to my own class, um, but it's just some interesting changes. Uh, I think the thing that makes it seem like I'm pandering more too, or like it confuses me a little bit more as well, is how many or just how much um, buffs they gave Warrior, who is already a strong 1v1 class. Just like more buffs. So I'm just curious, like, what the fuck they're doing uh, and what their mindset is. I kind of wish they would just give their reasonings at least, um, so we know, rather than just like say this, these are the changes. And then like buy like because people always want to ask why you start asking why when you're like three years old you know why 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 you know why do I why can't I touch the stove you know like why do I have to go to bed early blah 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 I mean we're the same way I mean we like why are you you know like decreasing the evasion rate because they're too tanky okay you know like the, the simplest explanations would have been great you know like why are you giving such a massive increase on range and super armor on void on void lightning for tamer because tamer's large skill suck dick oh okay makes sense <laughs> you know like <laughs> but that would require them to know what they're doing in terms of playing the game mm -hmm. you know what this is a side tangent but it's, i guess a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but league of legends we all know it some people right. hate it some people like it but right. when they do patches they talk about it. They say a little bit about certain uh, characters that they're buffing or nerfing and why. And sometimes they get backlash for it. But at least they're telling you why they're doing it. And the thing about League of Legends is that people who work at Air actually play the game. And they, they do know what they're doing mm -hmm. for the most part, I'd say. Right. I, I'm sure there's people at PA or Cacao that play this game. But I'm, what I'm telling... Or from what I'm seeing from these patches, at least a while back, they don't look like they know what they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I completely agree. I don't think they play their game, man. Like, I just... I I just don't see it. I don't see it. And, and, and the changes that happen in this game sometimes, it just, it's basically like a huge tell-all that they just do not play the game. And it bothers me because they have so many people... Who play the shit out of it. Just the ever living shit out of their game. I mean like non-stop. 12 hours a day. And like they don't. And they don't reach out. You know. Or, or they don't even try to find these people. Who who may hold. Exactly what you're saying. Who hold. Who can like put up and say hey. Why would you do that. So. But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about. And definitely so fake can chime in. As well. Um. Because I don't think it's going to be that long of a conversation too, 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 too much. But is the Shadow Arena. Um, we're going to cover Class class Balance and Shadow Arena, actually. But, um, so because it's just like, it was the most recent update. And they're making a few changes with it anyway. And, um, so I kind of want to take uh, a second. I kind of appreciate it. Because personally, I've had, like, a lot of fun with Shadow Arena. And I've really liked that they put it into the game. I've been playing it consistently for, um, I mean, since it's been released for money and for like enchantment supplies. So, since Fake hasn't really gotten a time to chime in at all, like, what are your like first impressions with the Shadow Arena? I mean, it's new content. It's nice. It's a PvP mode that's targeting everyone. Something that I that I have said they need to do. Uh, but. 
it's different. Um, solos, I have a hard time with solos growing on me, but I played the team mode with friends and admittedly, it's a blast. Um, it has potential, but I just question how they're going to do it. So the only thing I can really say is like, we'll see. Do you think the re rewards are like, do you think they're going to nerf the rewards we get from it? No, I, I, I don't know why they would. I don't know why they're they would good. either. They're, I, they're pretty good at where they're at. Pretty yeah, good. they're great where they're at. I mean, they're it's not like, broken, but they're good. And, and you should be heavily rewarded for winning. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I mean, because it's difficult. I mean, I've I've played probably close to. Actually, I can probably I can look at my stats right here. I think. Oh no, I have to change it into the server, don't I? Um, uh yeah. Yeah. Oh, what I calculated to be was that if you were to let's say get top three or at least one, let's say you get win every time, you're number one in mm -hmm. solos or parties. Right, right. You get around five to eight mil of silver. And you get around, I think the the top or whatever you call resplendent is like oh, five mil, five mil, four, four, five mil worth of stuff. So you get, mm -hmm. you, get you get around fifteen to twenty mil, uh, for like the for half an hour or like an hour. Oh, I've yeah, I've I've easily made um about fifty mil an hour without a doubt playing playing the game and doing well that is but even not doing well i mean you get enchantment supplies you get good silver an hour um it's fun you get to play it with other people even or if you don't have any friends then you can play solo and i mean it's still viable um i think that it's relatively balanced no matter what class you play for um for the for the for the most part um i know there's a bug right now where like dk's offhand uh doesn't give the class ap so that's like I really wish that they would make an announcement on that and like let everybody know that that's a bug so people don't pick DK because I always feel bad whenever I see somebody play DK and they don't know because like why would you, <laughs> why would you pick it because it's bugged I, right now. I've, I've kind of been ranting about this for a while but uh, I, I think it's a great game mode. Uh, the mechanics they implemented in it are I think really bad. Like the consumables. See I'd that's say, what I mean. That's why I say, like, I don't know how they're going to do it in terms of, like, balance. Because mm -hmm. the mechanics in certain classes seem a little all over the place. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the CC is a little bit iffy. Like, I like, because it, it's, it's not the same CC counter as that we have in the main servers, is it? I think it is. is I, it? Think that's the bad, I think that's the weird part. Um, hmm. I do. The one thing I hate about it is is rng but you know just because it has to be rng but the the thing is skill books that shit is the dumbest thing i think i've ever seen you can go in a game and get like 10 skill books but you can come out with one skill because it could be the same skill over and over that's dumb so getting so i'm okay with going out and picking up skills and having skills be rng i'm fine with that but if you find a skill book it should give you a skill that you don't have there shouldn't be a chance of it literally being this like the same skill over and over and over again or however however the fuck i don't know if it's a bug or or <laughs> it's just horrible design but like i i got really triggered the other day because i was legitimately playing i had one skill i had meteor which is great okay great i have meteor you know you can i mean it's not really awesome because you can only use it once in every two minutes but um uh that's the only skill i had and i found three skill books Three skill books after that. Every single time I picked up a skill book, I didn't get a new skill. Because apparently, I'm guessing to how it works, all three of those are meteor. What are the fucking chances? Out of all the skills out there that I could have gotten, it was meteor all three times. Like, I can't tell if it's a bug or what the fuck. But yeah, I agree. I think if you find a skill book, it should give you a skill that you don't have. As simple as that. Like, because that's cancer. That is super cancer. Because it's like finding nothing. It's like you spend your time killing a mob, you know, or killing a group of mobs, and then you loot, and you get nothing. Like, that shouldn't be right. Like, e everything you find should be able to... Because when you find, like, armor and stuff like that, even if you're not using it, or if it's worse than you already have, at least you're getting silver for it. Because the more armor you pick up, you know, it adds to your bank at the end of when you win. So when you find other shit, 
you're like, okay, I don't need this, but hey, at least, you know, I'm getting some silver from it. What the fuck ever. But like, when you find a skill book, you're like, hello? Like, there's nothing. It's it's the worst thing ever. So I really hope, yeah, they change that as well. I, I think that the gear difference in this, I think it should be halfened. It, it's it's insane, because you you start out with like what I think you start out with one twenty AP mm, yeah. and like ten DP, and in the end game, you you come out with like three hundred DP. I mean sorry three hundred AP and like some large DP, and when you're fighting someone, the gear difference is literally how you win <laughs> sometimes. It's true. It's, it's kind of insane. And I think that you should be rewarded. Like, I think that you should be re rewarded for Because those people who have that gear, they get that from killing other people. Like, there's no way they're lucky enough to literally find all those boss pieces. They get it from fighting, and they should be hella strong for, like, fighting a lot of people and picking up their loot. But, I d yeah, I agree with you. I think that the AP can get a little bit too fucking high to where, like... It's, like, overwhelming. Like, yeah. I mean, you I just get, I like, traded. Yeah, yeah. get traded and you just die. Yeah, no like, skill involved. You shouldn't get one shot. You know, like I shouldn't get one shot if I have basically end game DP. You know, like because I'll have like full blue armor, like full Lemuria on. But if somebody has enough AP, doesn't fucking matter at all. It does not matter how much DP I have. I'll get literally one shot, and that's a, like a, that's a bit much. It should be a fight, you know, at all times, in my opinion. And it's just a little bit too much AP. I think they should still be really, really, really strong. But, I mean, I should have, like, a fighting chance in hell, at least, of killing this person or something of that nature. So, I think that they should, like, adjust the gear values a little bit also. But, I mean, I hope they don't take away the rewards. The rewards are great. I hope they spend a lot more time with the game mode. This has been the first time where, like, I've actually enjoyed... A game mode that they've done well i mean i've enjoyed i enjoyed the team battle actually but it just the team battle is completely worthless and stupid like i don't know why they would don't change the rewards on team battles since they already had these rewards out for shadow arena if they like up the time because like the problem with team battle is it takes like seven and a half years to get through a game and then at the very end of it you get like like 1.2 mil or something crazy dumb and it's like it can be pretty boring um so i would kind of hope that they like would increase uh pardon me the reward on that or something because it, it's a lot of fun to do team battles to be completely honest but it's just not why would you do it if it's not going to help you progress because that's the nice thing about shadow arena is like you can play it and you don't feel like you're wasting your time you don't feel like you're like hurting yourself because as you play you're progressing and that feels good and that's why we play this game is progression i mean this game should literally be called progression online like it's it's that important to people i mean because you literally afk 24 7 in this game in order to progress and get money so you think they've kind of like central their mini games that they want to make and do well around still letting you progress but this is the first time that they've done that and then you wonder why it's so popular and people enjoy playing it and like keep doing it you know be kind of cute if like much like runescape with random events popping up if the black spirit popped up every now and again and offered you like a special reward for playing a round of the shadow arena that'd be really cool it's like five memory fragments for like coming in top 10 or something yeah mm -hmm. or, like a time where like rewards are like increased for like team battle or something to get people flowing into the game mode that's just a good idea. And rewarding players in general is a good idea. I mean, they they figured that out finally with the attendance rewards. So, like, I would really like that idea from, like, fake. Actually, you just kind of... I don't want to, again, talk about shit that... like Or, like, veer off the topics too much. But, like, that little, like, Black Spirit reward thing, that would actually be so cool to, like, have happen if you do anything in a game. Like, hey, you've killed 100... I'm not going for the murder again, you know, but you've killed a hundred adventurers this week. Here's a, you know, like a, a, a crystal. Yeah. A crystal or, or like a hundred sheep's blood. And you're like, Oh, nice. You know, or like, Oh, Hey, you've been farming a lot lately. Here's a magic seed. You know, you're like, Oh, Whoa, what the fuck? Sweet. You know, like 
I think, or like, oh, hey, you've you've done, you've played a lot of Shadow Arena, or you you can like word it however lore wise you want. Like, hey, you've played a lot of Shadow Arena, you know, here's like a resplendent Blackstone, like as if you got first place essentially. Like, oh, you've played fifty times but never got first place, but you've you know fought valiantly. Here's a resplendent Blackstone anyway. And that could even get people to want to go back into it because they know they'll, you know, they'll get that stone and they're like, oh, hell yeah. You know, people could like link it and chat, you know, and lie and say they won. You know, it help people. <laughs> it'd make people happy. And um, I think that'd be a good idea. So, yeah, I, I agree with you there. But, I mean, I'm happy with it. I've been playing this shit out of Shadow Arena and I've been having a good time. I've been getting even like really competitive with it and like. Like, just really enjoying myself and taking it even, like, seriously to an extent. And I, I hope that they spend more time on it and, like, fix it. and um, Or fix it more. And it's not necessarily broken, but to keep tweaking it. And um, and just help out our player base and provide a reason for new players to, like, kind of break out and get some PvP in. And have something for them to do also. Because the progression, it can get boring. And it's also a good thing for the end game players. I mean once you hit end game literally the only thing this game has for you is large scale and honestly large scale is pretty fucking cancerous and it's also toxic and i mean i enjoy large scale it's fun but you know i can't really i don't really like connect very well with it especially because of my class and also i would much rather like do small scale duels and stuff like that and i don't think that the large scale should be the only end game content especially because with the new node war changes coming out um, guilds are only going to be able to hold on to, uh, to two nodes a week. So if your guild wins two nodes, let's say Monday, Tuesday, and you have two nodes already, well, good luck. There goes the end game content that you've trained so hard for, for your entire time playing this game. No more node wars this week, guys, for the whole week. So like they're going to be cutting down and they're cutting down the time that people would want to play their game. And that's the only end game content they have is large scale. And then they just nerfed it to where you can only do it two days a week. Um, if you if you win consistently, so the fact that they came out Shadow Arena at this time is important and good, and I think it's good for the game. Um, and I hope they keep doing uh, stuff like this to kind of like encourage other ways to progress and play the game. I mean, it's kind of like what our last podcast was about was just adding things that we want to see. So, but that's pretty much all i have on the uh on the class changes in like shadow arena for the most part this now is kind of just like a waiting game do you guys have uh, anything else to add about shadow arena no well i'd like to see um workers stay active and energy recover mm. i agree with that i agree because it's like you're logged out when you play it like when you get into the like shadow arena server yeah. It's like you're logged out, essentially. Um, I actually did a test in my last YouTube video that you can like still kill people in it. Um, it like gives you like 500 DR. I'm really curious as to what the fuck like that server is. I think, I think it's like kind of like the servers that they're gonna use for the new marketplace, but I'm not sure. Like, I think it's just another server, like an extra spot. That's why they replaced Ovia or something, or I forgot what they did. They re they removed the server mm -hmm. for the Shadow Isle. Yeah. I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, I know. I agree. I think that your workers should definitely still work and you should recover energy as well. Um, because that kind of hurts the progression a little bit. Like, why would I go to Shadow Arena? I really need to, like, especially if you're, like, trade and you do, like, trade crates, you're, like, kind of thinking, hmm, I don't know about that. I mean, even though, it, it, like, the, what, Shadow Arena is time gated right now. So, I mean, like, Maybe that doesn't bother you too much, but either way, yeah, I'd like to see workers start working, even though you're there. But, but yeah, that's all the changes uh, that I'm going to talk about in Shadow Arena. You wanted, you wanted to talk about the uh, the Black Spear change? Oh, the rage change. Yeah, I wanted to touch on that real quick. Fuck, I was. Thanks for reminding me. All right, so to wrap it up, uh, to look at the we got from the KR servers basically changes, and I'll explain this shortly for those of you who wanted who. Uh, tuned in for this long uh, you're going to have a little bit of extra knowledge about what's coming in the future but um, this is translated from Korean so don't spend too much time reading it um, it's going to be it's iffy but I'm going to explain this kind of black spirit rage change to you and I'm um, going to make sure I do this right so listen to me carefully Zix so, so the way that black spirit rage works 
is we are going to have skills that you can use um, Black Spirit Rage on um, in like increments, meaning 25% Black Spirit Rage, 50% Black Spirit Rage, your 100% Black Spirit Rage, and your 200% Black Spirit Rage. And what I mean by that is like your 100% ability. Like, you know, right now in the game, we have our 100%. You know, warriors have solar flare, ninjas have useless stuff. You know, strikers have where they cross their arms and, you know, like a bunch of clones attack the ground and shit. Like I'm in a massive AOE. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. And we're getting these um, Black Spirit Rage on separate abilities. Um, I don't know what they are for every single class. I know um, for Ninja, one of them is Katana Shower. I'm almost positive. Um, and they're changing the way like damage happens when you cast these abilities and how much like extra damage you do depending on the amount of black spirit rage you had so meaning um let's say you're attacking i'm gonna kind of go off what it says here underneath i'll highlight it for you so like let's say you're attacking a giant with 5,000 health okay and um you use your 100 percent of black spirit rage um if the attack were to do 2,000 damage the giant would suffer another 1,000 damage, which is 50% of the damage that was initially dealt, okay? Meaning because you have 100% Black Spirit Rage and you do you use it and you do 2,000 damage to the giant, you'll do an extra 1,000 because you had 100%, which is 50% of the damage that you dealt, okay? I know that's kind of difficult to follow, but... um. It, the charts right here and I explained it as best I could another example and which is a little bit confusing as well is uh, and this is to the best of our understanding at the moment because these are Korean patch notes but um let's say here that I casted my 50% I don't know which one katana shower is but let's just pretend that my katana shower is my 50% black spirit rage okay um, but let's say I casted my katana shower at 50 per, uh, which is my 50% one but um, I had 100% Black Spirit Rage when I used Katana Shower. It would use 50% of it, but it would still do an extra 50% damage because I had 100% Black Spirit Rage at the time of me casting it. To the best of our understanding, that is how it's done. Um, we kind of think another uh, option that could mean is you cast your 50%. And if you have, but but if you have 100%, it'll use the full 100% of your Black Spirit Rage and, and do 50% of the damage. Um, like 50% extra damage. Um, but st and still use the full 100 Black Spirit Rage, even though you casted the 50. But it was the first explanation is what is what we believe it is at this moment. So that's kind of just like in the future. Did I explain that correctly, Zix? Yeah. It's just extra damage if you have more. What it is. Pretty much. It um it is pretty much buffs two hundred percent the skill in, in itself, kinda I guess. It's what we've been wanting all this time is the two hundred percent to literally do nothing, at, yeah. in terms of like damage viability. So now yeah, you can and they like, should actually melt people. Mm -hmm. So but, now if you let's say strikers two hundred percent will deal double damage now, which is gonna do a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean I agree. I think I think you should be rewarded for. You know, teaming up and getting 200% on you. I mean, that's a lot of organization. I mean, have you seen Zerker's 200% before? Isn't it like a massive shot? Yeah, it's like a, it's like straight up artillery. It's like a huge mortar. You, they like shoot it and it explodes like a million times um, at a location. And it does like a huge amount of damage. So like a Zerker 200% would actually be pretty fucking nasty in large scale. So... With this change, that is. I mean, it already kind of is, so with this change, it'd be, you know, obviously even more so. Especially from a geared Zerker. So yeah, I'm kind of interested to see if that actually makes any 200% is hella broken and people organize more to, like, give their Black Spirit Rage over. Mm -hmm. Rather than just, like, use them all individually in large scale. That'd be kind of interesting. But that is the change that we foresee happening. I'm kind of interested to see it as well. But, anywho... That's all we have for the uh, for the blah, 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 podcast. This one's a little bit all over the place, but it's a lot of like, I guess, theory and guessing and wondering and and, <laughs> and ooks 
it's a, it's a tough topic to talk about because nobody's going to be that knowledgeable in 100% classes, but that's where we kind of lean on you guys in the comment section to have to have these conversations and to, to further along the uh, the information given and the good talks to have. And I mean, for, even from all the, a lot of the past podcasts, the comments have always been really productive and not trolly and things like that. And I expect it in the future with this one as well, even though this one was a little bit all over the place. But I mean, it's important to talk about these things and kind of like get on the same like level headed playing field and determine if these are actually good changes and things of that nature. And also just to understand them in general. But that's all. Thanks for watching. If you uh, watched along this far and I really appreciate that. And thanks again for fake for his, uh, for stopping by and helping me out and uh, just keeping like a good presence in the uh, in the podcast, even though not a lot was said today, but it's going to happen sometimes. I mean, it helps me get these out anyway. And then thanks Ziggs for the insight as well and coming in on a uh, short notice and dropping some good um, comments on Warrior and a lot of